Hello everyone, welcome back to Pixel Village and I am Radha Krishnan. And before we begin, let's give a shout out to our sponsors of this video, Bohobox.in. Bohobox is country's newest and one of the finest, soon going to be one of the finest apparel online website. Well, they make some amazing t-shirts for the time being and lots of interesting accessories for people of all cross section especially for youngsters you see head over to boho box and see it for yourself and we have an amazing offer for you but you'll have to wait for the end of the video for that now on to our video surprise surprise it's another fuji well fuji is one company which has a very well demarked product offering for everyone from an absolute beginner to a serious amateur to an enthusiast and even to an absolute commercial professional photographer. But there is a group of people, a bunch of people which also includes the commercial photographer and the serious amateur photographer who are not exactly satisfied with the standard offerings. They, they want their camera to be built in a certain way, to be felt in a certain way and they were ready to pay a premium for a camera like that and it was in 2011 Fuji came with a camera like that the Fuji FinePix X100 a 12 megapixel 23mm f2 single lens okay a rangefinder style like camera that camera really invited you to pick it up and shoot with it. I myself wanted to pick it up and start shooting. In fact, I wanted to own one, but what prevented me was its high price. And you are not really used to paying $1,000 for an aim and shoot camera. It was basically, it looked like a compact bridge camera, but it had amazing capabilities. And you, I was certain that you can shoot a great portraits, street, architecture, landscape, you name it, you could have shot everything with it. But of course, uh, I did not pick it up at that time, but a lot of people did and swore by it. And interestingly, Fuji kept on upgrading that 100F. Well, it went through a series of iterations and when I eventually picked up, it was the fourth generation, the 100F classic design. If you are from the film era like I am from, you are definitely going to like this camera. And if you are from a mobile phone era and uh, if you care about uh, design, well, you too are going to like this particular design and many of them did. That's probably precisely why Fuji did not stop with the fourth generation, but they decided to upgrade this camera. Well, in fact, that camera is the talk of the YouTube world in the last couple of weeks. I'm talking about the X100V. Well, the V stands for 5, the 5th generation of the X100. Lots of updates. Well, I don't know how you can update or upgrade a camera which is already perfect. Well, but Fuji did not, they, they, they believe in not stopping anywhere and they kept on upgrading their stuff and as a result, you have the 100V. Well, now I have the 100F and the 100V in my hand. I would have preferred uh, the 100V in the classic chrome finish, but I don't have it. Well, because Fuji sent this pre-production, uh, you know, uh, product to us, so it was available only in black. That's okay, I'll live with it for the time being. Feels exactly the same. The design language, the build quality, the image quality, 
amazing and they have managed to upgrade and give you a better camera than the 100F. Let's look at what are the upgrades in the 100F. Let's start with the build quality of course. Well, you have the top and the bottom made of milled aluminum exactly like the way your previous camera is. There is a few kind of shapes which are different. This has got a kind of a slopping edge. This doesn't have it. It is a little a shade bigger than the uh, the 100 F and uh, what else? Uh, the apparent uh, cosmetic changes or the physical changes are now they have completely done away with the well, of course, all these things are now not new. People have been talking about in the YouTube world for the past two, three weeks. So you already know it. But for the sake of mentioning it, let me mention it. So they have done away with this, this whole scroll wheel, uh, you know, uh, from here, uh, which has released a lot of space here. The um, LCD is now can be tilted. Uh, in you know in two positions uh, well what else it's got an improved resolution for the LCD it's got an improved uh, uh, HVF it is a hybrid viewfinder it's got an improved uh, uh, ISO dial um, rest everything is exactly the same except two major changes which will directly contribute towards a better quality image. The first one is a improved lens design. They have added two aspherical elements inside it which will contribute to better quality of image. We will see how it has contributed in the image quality and a higher resolution uh, sensor. This has a 26.2 megapixel sensor, exactly the same sensor which is employed in the X-T3. Another important improvement which the X100V has is improved weather sealing. Fuji claims that they have weather sealed 70 different new places. Now, with the help of uh, the lens hood and a lens attachment, which of course is not available with us at this point, the camera actually becomes completely weatherproof, which means you can really take it out and uh, start shooting wherever you wish to. The earlier one was not a weather resistant or weatherproof. One interesting feature which many don't talk about, uh, about the X100 series, but a very important point is the leaf shutter in this lens. Now, the leaf shutter actually helps you to do away completely with any kind of mechanical shutter which is moving inside which will contribute to shake. For the same reason, Fuji has not really bothered to give you a in-camera uh, image stabilization, in-body image stabilization. I don't see a need for that. Another interesting feature of a leaf shutter is that uh, if you are someone who used to shoot with flash, well, you don't really need an HSS flash. You can sync up to the highest shutter speed available in this camera with a regular flash. That's the interesting thing about uh, the uh, leaf shutter. Another big improvement is 4K 30p in camera shooting. Externally, you can shoot uh, 4 to 2 10 bit, internally 4 to 0 8 bit. I don't know how many people will seriously shoot video with it, but it's a perfect camera for a gimbal uh, based shoot. Very light, reasonably wide lens, and yeah, I think there's no harm in trying. So, as they say, proof of the pudding is in eating. Let's go out and do it. So we've come to this open uh, fish market right in the middle of uh, all the Pune city. And we thought that's where we will put this uh, X100V to test. Well, I'm using uh, a Peak Design uh, cuff. It's, uh, it's a basic uh, wrist strap. And I also have the old 100F, which uh, this guy is replacing. We'll try and take some shots with this too. And this is again is a Peak Design uh, shoulder strap. Very interesting. What we're going to do is going to mix with the crowd, 
take some shots and uh, let's see how they fare. Yeah, come along with me. This one has a hybrid viewfinder, as you all know. Because I'm from the film era, I'd love to shoot with the optical viewfinder. So you get a nice frame around, uh, which acts like a sports finder. You can actually see people entering into your frame. You can plan your shots very well. And you can see the way you used to see in the olden days. EVF is also good, but I'm going to shoot the whole sequence with the, the optical viewfinder. really enjoying is the leaf shutter in this camera. For someone who is used to shooting with DSLRs and conventional mirrorless and medium formats, the leaf shutter is an amazing experience. I don't think you really need an IBIS or an optical image stabilization. This is just right. This also has a minimum focusing distance of uh, 4 inches. That makes this uh, capable of shooting very tight images. Now, few things I really like in this camera is that the first thing is, I don't think I missed any shot. Uh, you switch it on, it's ready to shoot. I was shooting in that optical viewfinder and it was amazing. Occasionally, I switch to the, uh, you know, the electronic viewfinder. It's nice, but I think I'm liking the optical viewfinder. Leaf shutter is, like I said earlier, is amazing. I'm, you know, any moment, I'm ready to take a shot with one hand if I'm not looking at it. Well, I took some few shots, you know, there's a saying, shoot from the hip. And I, I took some shots from an impossible angle, even without looking through what I am getting in the camera, just kept on shooting and did not miss any focus. And uh, one thing I miss in this, probably two things. Uh, the foremost thing that I miss in the new uh, 100V compared to the the 100F is this four-way uh, control. Here it is very easy for me to get into few controls straight away, whereas in here, it's a little roundabout. I would have preferred it to be here since there is space available. I think, uh, I know that uh, you know they have approached uh, a kind of a minimalistic design. They have done away with few you know, switches and uh, dials, but uh, I wish it was here. That would have really made the difference. Uh, and I can also see the YouTube resonating to the same idea. So maybe if there is a uh, uh, 106, then that must bring it back. I mean, that's what I feel. This place is offering a lot of interesting uh, opportunities. Let's continue our shoot.
I'd like to know how you like this t-shirt. Well, we liked it. And if you liked it, yes, use the link in the description below. Head over to bohobox.in and you will be entitled to a 5% additional discount over and above the existing discount, which I think they have a 40% discount going on. You will be surprised to see the amount of choices that are available and the quality of the fabric. I can watch for the quality and uh, the designs, of course. You even have themes that you can pick. We picked uh, photography, so we got these kind of t-shirts. Now to the X100V. We think that the 100V is definitely an upgrade over the 100F. And uh, it was very apparent from, you know, from someone who's used the 100F, 100V definitely feels, and the images also look much better. Uh, in a couple of other videos, I mentioned that I'm not exactly a street photographer, but I was very comfortable with this. I don't think I really missed any shot for the want of, uh, you know, focus or speed or whatever. It, I was completely at home with it and it is built to last and I think it lasts a generation. That's exactly why many people buy the whole series. I, I know a few people who have collected the entire series of uh, X100s. Now, few things that I'd like to see coming back onto this and few things I'd like to see coming as a new feature in the next upgrade. The first one is I'd like to see that four-way button coming back onto this. There is space and it's really easy. I, I missed it. I mean, that's something if I have to say I missed it, I, that's the one. Uh, that prevented me getting to a couple of menus uh, easier. I, I had to kind of go through one additional step one uh, the second one i missed is i wish it had a little more battery life considering the fact that this doesn't have too many moving parts i would have expected the battery to last a little longer other than that it's a perfect camera for uh, a whole lot of people another day another location of course this location is familiar and you know it we're coming back here after a long time well same uh, Boho Box, same me, and the same Fuji Film, the 100V. Uh, I'd like to tell you a few additional features that this camera has, uh, which uh, we've not explained so far. This camera has a fixed 23mm lens, uh, which is equivalent to 35mm in uh, full frame uh, format. Uh, which can occasionally put you into a kind of a spot because 35mm is not or may not be wide enough for you occasionally. In such scenario, what will you do? You are stuck with a lens which cannot be changed, removed. So Fujifilm has an option. There will also be occasions uh, where you might require a little longer lens. So Fujifilm has a solution for that too. That comes in the way of an adapter. In fact, two adapters. This one is called the WCL, which is a wide angle adapter. And this one is called the TCL, which is a teleconverter adapter. How does it work? Well, let's start with the wide angle first, because primarily I'm concerned about uh, the wide angle, because this is will be used predominantly by, let's say, street, landscapes, architecture, travel, etc. So wide angle. So let's try the wide angle first. So this is how you use it. Now there is a small removable ring in the front of the fixed lens, the 23mm um, F2 lens. You need to remove it. It must definitely go back in after use, okay? It's very important. And you can simply thread in the wide angle adapter. Voila, your uh, wide angle lens is ready. Uh, it is made of metal and uh, highly precise uh, opticals so that you don't really lose any optical quality. Usually adapters are the suspect. Uh, but in this case, not really. So let's shoot uh, one shot with the original lens and one with the wide angle so that you know what the difference is. 
Okay, let me shoot this way. Let me shoot it with That's the coverage that I'm getting with the uh, fixed lens. Now I'm going to stay at the same place, add the adapter. It's very easy, very simple. I'm already there. Now let me shoot it. So before and after. actually becomes a 28mm lens with the, with, with the adapter on, so the WCL on. And uh, this will be perfect for architecture, shooting in closed tight spots where 35 is not enough or uh, it's good for, uh, yeah, definitely landscapes and architecture for sure. Travel. I think this will be extremely useful when you travel and you can do, since the, uh, the optical quality is great and there are no compromises, this can be used as if you're using an original 28mm lens. And uh, for the landscape photographer, this also has a built-in four stops ND filter, okay? It is electronic, so all you have to do is to go to the menu and select ND filter, switch it on, you will instantly get a four stops advantage, which is very good for a landscape photographer or somebody who wants to, let's say, shoot uh, certain uh, subjects in a particular aperture and you're not really getting it with the maximum shutter speed and maximum or minimum ISO, you want to open up the aperture and all that, the four stops will help you to great extent. Uh, the only disadvantage or rather negative about that feature is that that feature is not available in the video uh, mode. Well, personally, that's where it really requires for me because that four stops can really save you a lot of uh, pain. So we shifted location again to uh, demonstrate another feature of the X100. Another interesting feature of the X100. Like I told you earlier, the X100, the whole series has a leaf shutter, which means the shutter is in the lens, not on the focal plane. And that allows the photographer to sync the flash in speeds uh, higher than the standard sync speeds of 1 by 125th or 1 by 250th. Now, uh, we have our resident model here, Aditya is ready. And if you look that way, you can actually see what is behind him, okay? So I'm gonna take some shots uh, without the flash, okay? Using the existing ambient light. And uh, I'm going by the exposure meter inside. I'm gonna take a spot meter reading. So that's the image without a fill flash, okay? Now, you can see that there is an interesting backdrop to this whole scene. There is this open ground with a lot of trees and unfortunately, we don't have any clouds today, but uh, I'd like to bring that back. So let's see, let me set the exposure for that. Aditya is in almost a silhouette in which case you have to add a flash, right? Okay, so let's add a flash. I have already have a flash set here and mind you, you don't really require any complicated flash. Any good quality, powerful manual flash will do. I'm using a regular pocket wizard uh, transmitter. It's sitting on uh, AD200, so there is no TTL, pure manual. And let's start syncing this flash at the standard sync speed, which is say one by 1 25th of a second. Okay, so the, here goes my first shot. 
the background is overexposed. So let me increase the shutter speed. Okay, so the background, the light on the face remains exactly the same. Because the background is exposed by the shut or, or affected by the increase in the shutter speed, which is like almost a one stop, that become darker. Okay, let me increase the shutter speed by one more stop and we should also see the teleconverter, you know, the one which converts the, the standard uh, lens to a 50 mm lens. In this case, I can actually shoot a very nice portrait uh, of Aditya using the TCL, the teleconverter lens. Ready? By the way, adding either the WCL or the TCL doesn't alter the maximum opening. It will remain as uh, the F2 itself. That's a great advantage. The Fujifilm 100V is a real all-rounder. It can also shoot great video. In fact, what you are watching me is shot on the Fujifilm 100V at 4K 30p. So I think it will be a perfect option for a whole lot of people. It's, it's, it's definitely for street, it's definitely for documentary kind of work, photojournalist, landscape photographers, we've not shot them because we're not very good at it, but landscape photographers, perfect with the TCL adapter and the WCL adapters, it worked magic. Portraiture, it can even shoot great portraits in the studio. So it can be a second camera to let's say a professional. Well, and also a family man who wants to buy something for their family and uh, he's not really happy with, let's say, a plastic looking cameras or a mobile phone. For such people too, this camera is a perfect option and it can last a generation too. I think, am I exaggerating a bit too much? The sun is setting. Let me get out of this place. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>